to yet another exciting uh, show here on uh, Breakfast Live. And my name is Kokulumo. Thank you very much for keeping faith with us. We're truly grateful that you can join us as always. It's a good morning. Where are you? What's happening? Uh, get to share with us exactly what the experiences have been throughout the night. We want to hear from you. Remember, you are the biggest part of this show, Breakfast Live. Of course, if this is the first time, it's about a two-hour show uh, that starts with a media review segment where we get to speak about the topical issues uh, just like you've heard it, it either from yesterday or through to, till today. We get to discuss that. And of course, there's an entertainment and lifestyle segment uh, that encompasses almost everything that has to do with the lighter side of the news but most importantly, something that serves you right in the morning. And so welcome to the show. This is Breakfast Live. As always, get to share with a friend because we're streaming live on Facebook as well, TV Africa Online GH. And so uh, you're part of the show. Welcome. Well, coming up, it's a conversation uh, about 1D1F, uh, one district, one factory. And the question is, how is it tackling the issue of high inflation? Uh, there's a lot more that is said uh, than done. Today, 23.6%, uh, the highest in terms of inflation si since uh, 2004, I guess. Uh, and yet, we have about how many factories built? Uh, how many things are being produced here? I ask this question, especially uh, uh, I put these questions to the CEO of the National Youth Authority, and we had a banter here in the studio about what the figures are in terms of employment, what we're producing, and how it helped tackles some of these things. Because the more you produce here, the understanding is that uh, once it's consumed here and sold here, the money's in the pocket, the pressure on the city, uh, of course, goes down. But hey, a lot of things are still high. We'll get to talk about that. Also, nurses are calling for the improvement in conditions of service. New, new, new thing? No, I'm not too sure this is news. We we'll talk about that as well. Promoting technical and vocational education in Ghana government enrolls 44,000 TVS students and other things as well. But, but before I do some business and also later, we'll talk about uh, uh, the, the violence uh, that's happening in Nigeria. Uh, the student in Nigeria that was murdered over alleged blasphemy uh, against a particular religion. We'll, we'll talk about that in the entertainment and lifestyle segment. But I have, I have an issue before I do business. I have an issue. The issue I have is that, once again, the police are in the news for bad reasons. Bad reasons because clearly the 48-hour rule of engaging a suspect in their custody has once again been flouted. This time, it has resulted in the death of a young man that is purported to have witnessed a robbery case that purportedly involved or allegedly involved some policemen. And of course, uh, the, the policeman soon realizing that he had seen stuff that he didn't have to see, went ahead, picked uh, uh, him up, what we're understanding is that he was murdered after three weeks. They couldn't find the body. It was when they started agitating, the young people of the area started agitating. That's when all of these things came to light. But the question I'm asking is that, you see, when all of these things happen, it's not about the talk. It's clearly about how quickly we bring closure to the matter. Today, Major Mahama, after what, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, the Attorney General has now closed case against 14 accused persons. Major Mahama, that was brutally murdered by those people, of course, in 2017. Attorney General has now closed case. George Floyd in the United States of America, three weeks, that was said to have made the people, uh, you know, uh, even uncomfortable. Three weeks, the policeman, Chauvin, was sentenced to 20, is it 22, I guess, 22 and a half years. 
So it is about how quickly we bring closures to these issues. And also, I understand uh, uh, from Mr. Emmanuel Bombande uh, that we do not have systems. No, no, of course, that was Peter Tobu. We do not have systems, the MP for hours. We don't have systems to bring independent inquiry or commissions to investigate police. So the police will investigate themselves. The question I'm asking is that the last time I heard this, when young people had to go brutalize uh, 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 or attack the police station, the inspector general of police rushed there and issued a stern warning. My question is, for about three weeks since the issue happened in, in Kranza, didn't it, or didn't they bring it to the attention of the IGP for him to rush there rather? Or is he waiting for the group to brutalize the police people before he rushes there? I think it, this is bad. It's bad in every sense. We cannot live in a country where our own, for which, I mean, of course, our taxpayers' money is being used to pay them, who do these things to us. Every day, so malaria is no more killing us, cholera is not killing us. It's, we are suffering from police brutalities. We are yet, we are told to keep quiet. I don't think it's right. It's never right. So once again, we are watching, just as others have happened, we are watching. And so if the Inspector General of Police wants to take the praise as he wants to also take, we are watching this case as well. Because clearly, this is in bad taste, and no country should suffer in the hands of people who must protect them. Well, if you want to land at 4,000 Ghana cities, and of course, half plot of land at Weneba, and most especially 6,000 Ghana cities, half plot of land at Akrama, and then you have to go to Jat J Real Estate Construction Company Limited. Uh, because they started an initiative in December, Stop Renting and Own a Land Now initiative, all right? Now, upon purchase of these 4,000 Ghana cities for half plot at Winneba or 6,000 at Akramai, what you do is that you are getting free blocks, free cements, and iron rods. Then also, digging is also free. The plots are serviced with available power and water, free of land guts as well. They do site locations on Fridays and Saturdays at 7 a.m. Now, you can locate their office after the Katsua toll booth at the Galilea bus stop. Call these numbers uh, to book an appointment now, 0548456911 or 0543 778085. Now, as always, when you're doing water, let it always be awake, awake, uh, because you are donating one peso of that purchase to Kolebu's Cardiothoracic Center. And so that's why you need to drink more water. Let it always be awake. Now, also, if you have issues with your hearing, uh, you feel pains in your ear, uh, there are discharges in your ear, you find it difficult to hear people when they speak to you, you have to turn on your volume on your TV or radio set high before you could hear, then you have to go to Chris Pat Hearing Center. Today, look at the offices at Ho Tema, Kumasi, Takradi, Accra. Call these numbers, 0248-878-057 or 0244-675-962. Chris Pat, your hearing expert. Also, if you are still paying and more for transfer charges whenever you send money. Uh, this is 2022. Uh, we are not doing that anymore. On Vodafone, it's free of charge, apart from the e-levy that is uh, uh, there. Uh, it's free of charge. Sending money, receiving money, whatever you do uh, with Vodafone Momo is free of charge. And so leave those other people who are charging you more. Come to Vodafone. Uh, let's enjoy uh, a lot of freebies. Because sending money, receiving money is free on Vodafone uh, Momo. All right, so that's why you need to dial star 110 hash, and then you are, you are good to go. Well, Vodafone further together. I would um, let you into some of the videos from uh, Nkranza. Uh, the, the, there's a lot of tension, we understand. Uh, the police has also called for calm and all that. Um, and this is what they have to say. Take a watch. So we should all be concerned 
that today is Ampetongo, tomorrow it will be me, tomorrow it will be what? You. Friends. Yes. And to their commanders, they say, Kasiana Sabi, or say, you're the young one, you're the man. And to say, Antiana, say, where did you? Abedon kwa na tono, na nyame, enyewe, enyewe, ndi ya pia ba diyatma. Na ye huni saa, niye unse, ujong kwa da eno da, na ye nina ya mboy ano hadi ya, na eche ye paasi ya kikhe hon, saa kwa nisho. And I want to say that we are all sorry for this incident, and for that matter, nobody should be happy. Inti, ye kanyina anise, e ye achopa, Aye, di bima ana peni se enchaye se bi ekoba anon enye sana ono peni se prosi peni pa no ye emlani ni nangu openo nenso enya akubasa. I was in Accra for one week and I came back on 27th of April and this message I got rumor that this was what happened in Accra. Amu bela se. Amoba, Nadia, Essie, a way in the art better home. Amoba, the town, you for no one. No bother, wait, you don't. Nakasa, almost one. Amoba, dear mind. In this other day, Amoba to an uncle, dear mind. Very kind of baby, dear mind. Nothing you will be surprised. In this age, you have the man who said, Hey, you know, who is. Regional Minister, I had to link out to link out to link out. Hey, you are a good job. On it, I pay all the ship for you. Come on, you know. All right, so the, those are scenes when uh, the police engaged the youth who were visibly angry. And we understand tensions uh, were rising in, in Kranza. Clearly, uh, why won't ten tensions rise there? Because uh, I, it's, I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. Really, really, I don't know what country we are in now. But uh, before we touch base with Evans Kwabena Sapon, uh, who is a reporter at Dura FM in Kranza, uh, I want to tell you what I'm wearing this morning is from Kofi Gold. Uh, Kofi Gold is one of the best, if you like, here in Africa uh, that connects with you as far as the African attires are concerned, all right? So uh, the issue of ensuring that there are designs on your dress, um, these Ghanaian symbol, African symbols, all of them uh, are here. Kofi Gold. Uh, you can find, you can shop online, www.coffeegold.com or call these numbers uh, to get a beautiful attire. Could be long sleeves, anything you want. 0244-786-392. 0244-786-392. You get yourself a beautiful Coffee Gold attire. I'm truly grateful uh, that I'm wearing Coffee Gold today. Let's touch base with Evans Kwabena Sapon now uh, via phone. And get some more details on these. Good, uh, good morning, and thanks for joining us. You're welcome, my brother. Right. Uh, what's new? We understand that uh, there were tensions uh, there. We recorded some uh, young people who were visibly angry. Uh, what's, what's the situation like? 
Well, so let's welcome our viewers on TV Africa uh, to Nkranza in the Bunis region. And uh, today, being Tuesday, has been uh, almost um, one week since we heard of the demise of our dear brother, Albert Donko, uh, a.k.a. Baruso. Um, Albert was a businessman, uh, a trader, and also, also um, he was also a, what we call the multi-TV installer. Uh, the, the, the decoder, those, who, uh, those guys who have been installing um, the multi-TV dish for, for, for uh, their customers. He's one of those in Ukraine here. And uh, recently on 24th of April, um, the news is that he traveled to uh, Romankese, mm -hmm. one of the towns in um, Ukraine North. That is where he traveled to, and on his way back to Nkranza, uh, unfortunately, he bumped into an armed robbery scene where uh, he was also attacked by these robbers. So he had to, uh, you know, lay down, uh, let's say, lie down, and then his laptop, which was uh, at his back, was also removed uh, for, for, from him. It was seized. Then his motorbike, but he's about like he's more, almost like a bouncer, a bulky person, 28 years of age. So he and the armed robbers, uh, they had some tussle. And he, he was able to maneuver his way out of uh, this robbery scene, and he got, he got back to Nkranza. But um, that particular night, on the 24th of April, a, a friend of his was celebrating his birthday at a nightclub uh, known as um, Rooftop uh, Pub. So he went there, and in one of those conversations, he told uh, these friends that uh, he was highly surprised, he was astonished, astounded by what he saw on his way back from Jumankese after he went there to do uh, uh, um, the business of his. Then, uh, in, yes, he told the friends that, uh, in fact, he, he saw a, a policeman in Ukraine, he, who he believed was also part of the robbery uh, that went on uh, at the Fia River, uh, in fact, on the uh, Ukraine Ketapo Road. And so, we don't know, one of these friends also told this policeman uh, who are allegedly part of this robbery uh, in which Abed was attacked. So uh, that particular night, around 1 to uh, 2 uh, uh, on the 25th of uh, April, the, he, he was picked uh, at his house. That was Albert. He was picked by some policemen. But let's em emphasize here. Let's state it categorically clear that when Albert was picked from his house, he wasn't uh, uh, put into the, um, what do you call it, uh, the, the police did not go there with the patrol car, the Mkranza South uh, patrol car. It was a private car uh, that they used to uh, pick Albert. Please, I, I, are you talking to me? Well, no, I'm listening. All right. So um, the, he was taken into a private car. Then the mother was informed. Madame Comfort, the mother of uh, our brother Albert, was informed that, um, hey, tomorrow you have to come to the district police station uh, because your son is being taken for uh, a suspicion of robbery. So the mom, uh, you know, also followed up around the 2.30s there about, but when he reached the uh, district police station, I mean, I don't know, uh, in fact, I can't say, I'm at the con, 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 2 a.m. there about, so 2.30 there about, the, the woman came to the district police station where, in fact, uh, uh, on, his, uh, on her arrival, she was told that the, the, the Albert, the son had been taken to Tichima. That was the information they gave to her, uh, per the report she, uh, or the, the interview we granted her, and she also uh, uh, telling us or confirming this to us. So um, the next morning, which was like broad daylight on the 25th of April, she came back to the police station that they said the son is, uh, uh, has been taken or transferred to Tichiman. So what uh, is she supposed to do? Then she, they, told, they told her she has to go to Tichiman. She went to Tichiman, but uh, on her arrival at Tichiman District Police uh, Station, she was told no, no uh, person or whatsoever called Abed uh, Donko has been brought to um, Tichiman uh, for robbery uh, case or whatsoever. Then she went to Kintampo. Uh, later on, she had to go to uh, Sunyane. But all these uh, 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 traveling you know, errands did not yield any positive results because Albert, as that time, let's uh, confirm to our uh, cherished viewers on TV Africa that Albert had been shot. He had been shot that particular oh, night, uh, per the report we, 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 we've gathered. Abed had been shot, uh, in fact, on the um, Techiman Kentampo uh, highway there about uh, those people who know Techiman. Our report, uh, uh, what we can confirm to them is that nowadays or recently, the robbery cases that have been going on in um, the, the Bunu East region, most especially in Kranza, uh, it has also uh, alarmed, the, um, or let me say, um, angered the police 
who have also got uh, what you call a, a warranty per what we are hearing. So many robbers have been taken to the town of Boise to uh, to where uh, they, they, they are being given their last uh, you know prayers. Then they, they say goodbye to the world. So I bet per our report can we can confirm that that was where he was shot. I but, see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so currently, the police, uh, we understand, had engaged the the youth. Uh, what have they told them? So I, I, I'm, I'm coming there. I, I'll come no, there. I want us because so, we don't have time. Uh, okay, I want us okay, to deal with that. Okay, okay. Let, let me be quick on it. Right. Now, after his death, right. after he was shot, uh, um, the mom tried everything to get. To, to, to the whereabouts of Albert, but uh, as I said, it, it didn't yield any results. So on the 12th of May, 12th of May, just uh, last week, that's where the news broke out in Uganda that Albert is no more, and the mom was informed that it was during when they were taking Albert to Tetiman. Uh, that was when the, the, the police were also attacked by a different uh, gang, uh, Amrob, Amrob Press, and then uh, Albert was shot during that time. Meanwhile, it's Albert who died. The, the, the police, uh, what, uh, those people who were escorting Albert, uh, none of them was, uh, you know, uh, died. So this is a fabricated story. Some people believe that, no, this, this is not a concordance story. How can Albert only be shot during the, 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 the time that you were traveling from Ukraine to Tichiman uh, uh, when you met a, a Rob, Roberts? And the, 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 the bullet did not touch anybody apart from Albert. So Albert is no more. So the youth also rose and said, no, we demand justice for Albert. Wherever he is, you should let us know. The Ghana police service, most especially in Ukraine South, uh, district police command. They should let the people of Uganda know. And that's where on Friday they started burning car ties, uh, seizing roads uh, in the night until the rainfall uh, stopped them. Then on the Saturday, we had the presence of the regional minister, Honorable Kwesi Vijan. We had the uh, regional police commander, uh, DCOP Atibila, uh, just as we were uh, playing for, for, for our child viewers on TV. So what, it means we, is that, they, so what it means is that if mm -hmm. you had not burnt car ties and blocked roads, uh, the Good. police wouldn't have not responded. They, they wouldn't have come. They wouldn't have come. That 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 um, action uh, went viral on social media, and the IGP was also giving uh, 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 an excerpt of the videos of uh, what, what went on or, or transpired in Ukraine last Friday. And so from there, then they, they came here. It was not only the DCOP um, Atibila, the regional police commander, and that of the regional minister on Abuja, but NIB boss in the Brunei East region. I mean, National Investigation Bureau boss and the Fire Service Commander boss. In the British region, they were all here in Ukraza. They met the Obahima, they went to the Ankobi Ahene, Nana uh, Ohineba Ajibafu, they went to his house where they also met the youth. And that is where this uh, video that we played also uh, went, went on. And they told the youth in Ukraza that uh, on Monday, being uh, three days after that Saturday, they will know. In fact, the regional minister uh, promised the people of Nkwaza that they will know everything about this Albert's death. But yesterday, um, the, the youth did not hear the uh, regional minister. We did not hear him uh, do any press conference on uh, this Albert issue. So they are still in suspense uh, to what the regional minister will be bringing on board after uh, now the, uh, everything is confirmed by the regional police commander that uh, uh, Albert is no more on Saturday. So okay. where is Albert? Where is Albert? They are demanding. Where is Albert? Who are the policemen who who, who, went, uh, who picked Albert? And why did they kill him? What, uh, you know, uh, 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 crime did he commit? Did, okay. did that crime warrant death? Okay. Uh, or the, is it because of the laptop that they, they, they seized and maybe they had, they, they, they collected that laptop from the robbers? That's okay. the reason why they took such action. Now the people of Nkwaza are still, uh, you know, uh, in high, 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 dismay and um, are very angry, annoyed by okay. this action. All and right. they are demanding justice for Albert. Meanwhile, okay. some artists, some artists, I'm ending it, some artists in Nkwaza um, have also, uh, you know, released a soundtrack for Albert, justice for Albert. Don't okay, go. very well. And, that's uh, that's also okay. The, now, yesterday they shot the video and what i'm hearing from the youth is that on friday, on, I'm, I'm ending it on friday the youth will be doing a peace demo uh, demonstration and they'll petition the regional minister if they do not hear anything from him my brother thank you very much evans governor sapon is reporter at dero fm at Nkranza and giving us uh, detailed very detailed uh, updates on that questions uh, well uh, we have uh, adele umar ibrahim uh, who is with the ndc in the studio uh, we're going to be taking a break shortly. When we come back, we'll start off with him. Questions here. Uh, who were the policemen who were engaged in the purported robbery case that uh, Albert chanced on? Two, who shot Albert? Three, uh, in the police custody, was he brutalized? Four, where is the body 
of uh, Albert Five. Why did the police wait after three weeks uh, to come there to address the young people only after the young people engaged in uh, mounting roadblocks and, of course, burning of tires as well? A lot of questions on my mind today in a Ghana that has enjoyed democracy for quite some time now. Today we are where we are because, I don't know, we'll take a break at this point. When we come back, Adel Omar Ibrahim is in the studio. We're expecting... Uh, the other panelists from the New Patriotic Party to join us. Stay. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us here on Breakfast Live. Uh, my guest for now is Adele Omar Ibrahim. He's a member of the NBC's National Communications Bureau, also vying for the position of Deputy Regional Youth Organizer. Uh, come the elections. Hi, it's good to see you. Uh, first time here? No. Oh, I see. I used to be on Pan African TV. No, oh. uh, uh, yeah, on TV, TV Africa, Africa, right? I mean, almost yeah. on a weekly basis in 2016, 17. Oh, I see. Um, early 18. Oh, I see. I was here. Oh, I see. <laughs> Welcome back home. Thank you, my brother. It's Thank good. You. It's good to see you. All right. Okay. First of all, let's touch base with that particular story. Uh, what's your quick reaction? The problem, the problem we have in this country mm. is that we lack leadership. Okay. And why I say we lack leadership is because the buck stops at the head. Mm. The mm. Ever since 2017, I made a statement. Mm. I'll try and pull out that statement one of these days and put it on Facebook. Mm. I would try as much as possible to pull that statement out. Mm. When the attacks happened in the Flagstaff house. Okay. And nothing was done to these young men who did that. Okay. I said we had something coming. Okay. Because let things happen anywhere, but not in the seat of government. People needed to be punished for it to set an example. Okay. People have been emboldened over time. If you look at this very situation I'm listening to, mm. this is not something that requires rocket science. Mm. Someone came home, picked somebody from the house, said they were taking him to the police station. Mm. Luckily enough, God made them leave a message that come to this police station. Mm. They left. We go to the police station. The police station says, no, he's been sent to another police station. They travel to the other police station. They say, no, he has not been brought here. They check other police stations. He's not there. The police officer who said he's been sent to the other police station, where is he? Mm. Where is he? He should be able to tell us who sent him there because obviously if you're saying if you're passing on the message that he has been carried to another police station you should know who carried him there you should have gotten some information so who took him there and then three weeks we're saying three weeks one two three three weeks he's not been found in any police station where is the commander in the said police station at Ngoranza? where is he where are the books? I mean, where is the, where, where is the police login books? Where are the books? Let's check the books. Was he brought there? If he was brought there, he's then will be there. Unless otherwise we're saying that when he was brought there, he was actually transferred immediately. He wasn't actually placed in there. But this is obvious. This is just, this is clear murder. Like, if you have nothing to lose or you have nothing to fear, put the facts out there. Let the people know. Why three weeks? Mm. Mm. And the continuous, and at least, you know, we have another information that tells us that the said gentleman made mention to his friends that he saw a police officer in a crime. Mm. I saw a police officer in a crime. In less than three, five hours, he's picked up. This police, this police station, that police station, we still cannot track him. He's dead. I mean, put one to two, two to three. Mm. But you see, 
The problem, as we speak, is not the fact that he's passed on now. The problem is that if the people of Ghana don't come together to do something about the current situation we find ourselves in, it will get worse. Mm. Because when people are emboldened to do the kind of things they're doing today, and we all agree that the things that are ongoing today is unacceptable. Who knows the allegiance of that woman whose son passed away today? Maybe she's even MPP. Mm. Maybe she has a family member who is a police officer. We live in a country where we must come together, irrespective of religion, irrespective of tribe. When there is a problem with leadership, that problem has to be resolved by the people. Mm. I'll give you a scenario. Take Ghana, like the Ashanti Kingdom. Asantehene and the Ashanti Kingdom have what you call gold. They have farms, they have trees. You know, these are the assets they have as a kingdom. Mm -hmm. The Otun Four has a responsibility to make sure that every single thing that is in existence in Ashanti region is used to help the people of Ashanti region. Mm. But not everybody can be an Otunfo. Mm. So we decide, whether by, by, by tribe, by, but we decide, okay, this person fits. The whole family sits down and says, okay, this person fits to lead. In exchange, this is what you earn as a Otunfo. You end that, you end this, you end that, you end this. Don't give, just make sure that when issues come to you, you deal with it diligently. Just make sure that the people of Ashanti region are doing well. Then the Otunfo goes to sit on the seat. He takes all the benefit that is given to him and then denies the people what is meant for them. This is what it is. You and I cannot go sit in, in, in Flagstaff House. All of us cannot go there. But we're all sons of Ghana. We're all daughters of Ghana, irrespective, no tribe, no religion, nothing. Just put all that aside. The daughter of that woman that's selling kinky, the daughter of that woman, or the son of that woman that sells charcoal, mm. the orphans who are living, also children's home, all of them, we have a part in the country's monies that we generate. I see. I mean, I, I want to agree with you on the issue of uh, people being emboldened, especially uh, the uh, the officers, mm. I mean, because in 2006, mm. according, I mean, with the Floyd, um, uh, George Floyd's arrest, uh, right. Chauvin was recommended for a medal of valor for his mm. role mm. in the shooting of a man mm. who aimed at a shotgun, mm. a shotgun at officers. Mm. But there were at least 15 conduct complaints against him prior to the killing of Mr. Floyd. Sure. Most were closed without discipline. So 15 conduct complaints, mm -hmm. but these cases were closed without discipline shoving. And so it emboldened him to go further to do the last one, that was George Floyd. So I can understand when you say they become emboldened, the officers, I mean. I'll tell you something. You're working here, TV Africa. Mm. You're supposed to give news, mm. have conversations with people right. like this. Each time you come on set and you find a panelist say something you're unhappy with, you go haywire. Mm. Management has a responsibility mm. to call you to order. Right. If they fail to call you to order, it will continue to happen. Absolutely. It's just common yeah, absolutely. It's just common logic. Beyond so, that, I'm expecting Clearly, I don't know. I don't know. We would have to end this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's just. No, but, but you see, it's 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 worrying. Mm. Extremely it is. worrying. It is. It is. Do you know after the bullion van thing robbery, we all sat down and spoke about it and were uncomfortable about it. Mm. But honestly, personally, any time I had found myself in town driving and a bullion van was passing, I was uncomfortable. Mm. There mm. are occasions I would have to give three, four, five cars, go, or park, let them go. Because, they, I mean, they're heartless. Like, mm -hmm. you know, these are just heartless people. Like, we will do anything. We don't care. It's almost as if God doesn't exist. Like, everybody does whatever he wants, and it's okay. It's fine. I see.
So those are the issues we have on our hand as a people. Now, again, we're expecting to see closure brought to these uh, uh, cases and the appropriate sanctions also given to these culprits when found culpable. But again, I, I stated something for the George Floyd that we celebrated in this country. We, we did even a service for. Huh? We did a service for in this country, George Floyd in the United States. He used three weeks for the trial. I'm saying that uh, Major Mahama is from 2017. How many years now? About five, six years. The, the AG just closed the case. As for the other cases there, I'm too sure. Because, and you say uh, justice, the wheels of justice grind slowly. Please, please, please. You can't speak that English. Because clearly, because Pastor closure has not been brought to that, the wife and the children are still in pain. Well, away from that, nurses have told the government to improve their conditions of service in the country. Clearly, uh, in order to reduce the brain drain in the health sector. Now, if you uh, watch out the space, the other day, the General Secretary of uh, the Ghana Medical Association had spoken vehemently and it's like we both know but coming from that point we understand that a lot of nurses and medical practitioners are leaving this country uh, for better offers outside the country clearly it's better out there i have engaged many of them now nurses have also told government and warned them that if you do not increase or improve our conditions of service you are going to suffer more i'm too sure they have a lot of costs this is where we are today you know, the issue with the Ghanaian nurses mm. is something that has, I mean, see, the people of Ghana, mm. sometimes I feel, do not listen well. The people? The people. Okay. Look, the, the problem, you mean. the problem is not the politician. Okay. The problem is those of us that hand over the power. Mm. When two people sit in front of you, each one of them certainly has ideas. Mm -hmm. You have a responsibility to decipher the ideas. But you see, when you don't know both people, it makes it difficult. But when you know both people, then you're responsible to take good decisions for all of us, like it or not, because it is 50 plus one. And that is difficult. If it was 70, 80 plus 1, then we're good enough. But this is 50 plus 1. What it means is that 49 could actually be right. But because there's an extra 1, all of us would have to struggle. All of us. The NBC had an agenda for the nursing community. Let me bring you to the issue of nurses' allowance. Mm. I just, I'm taking you back mm. so we can all reflect on something. Mm. What did the NBC say? We said, we're giving you allowances. Those allowances we're giving you makes it difficult for us to be able to improve the nursing sector. It doesn't allow us to be able to create extra access for other nurses like you, young, younger sisters, your daughters, to be able to join. So here's what we're going to do. We would take away the free allowance. Let's make a note. Free allowance. It's an allowance we're giving you. It is free. We will take it away. However, we would not leave you like that. We would replace that with a student loan. Are you with me? Mm. OK. Tertiary institutions are already going for student loans. We will put you on that scheme. So you're already in school, you're benefiting. When you're done, we're going to use the monies we're giving to you to build hospitals, to build extra schools. So when you complete, you would have a job. And when you have a job, because you're earning salary, it is difficult to clear off that loan. How difficult is this? Well, today, if you, if you sing that lullaby again, you're going to lose, uh, you're, go you're going to be punished at the polls. Listen. I'll tell you something. Back then, in 2016, 2017, we had a situation. Mm -hmm. The kind of money the NDC has gotten 
as compared to the kind of money the MPP has gotten today. If we are had the kind of money the MPP had gotten today, so the conversation we're having is not about today, about mm. yesterday. Mm. We would equally have been able to maintain it. Okay. But at the time, it made sense to do this. Bear with me. Mm. The difference between the NDC and the MPP is that we're good when it comes to money management. They're indisciplined. So we said, let's do it this way. When that happens, you earn. Somebody comes out there and says, oh, they're going to take away their money, but forgets to talk about the fact that we're replacing it. <laughs> the person doesn't say, oh, they're replacing it for you. It's a replacement. You have nothing to lose. We're not asking you to pay today. We're saying when you are done schooling, be, be mindful enough be, be thoughtful enough to think about your other siblings who are coming. This is how you build a nation. You, you have to put the people's mind to a course. You cannot, you cannot build a nation. And mind you, the youth, the youth is the strongest force any nation can ever have. So if we cannot let the youth have a common mind, let them understand what it means to help each other, to support each other. Yes, you're a nest today, but what about your siblings coming? What about your own daughter who would where, want to join the profession? Where do you draw the balance where a lot of free things or access to free things uh, has been uh, the, the campaign message mm. of political parties? Because clearly for everyone in this country, mm. they ask for free things, not because they want it, but because they've been promised that they'll be giving. See, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this for free. There is nothing wrong, and I mean this, there is nothing wrong with helping those struggling. We have to admit that. Both in Christianity, both in Islam, both in any, any culture, there is nothing wrong with helping the poor. That is why we tax the rich to support everybody else. And I hear people say religion is not about politics. That is the greatest mistake you can ever make. Because the greatest leader, the largest president, who doesn't take care of just 30 million people, but including creatures like ants, he's a president, he's a king, and he has a system. And we all agree that we have to have a system to make anything work. So you cannot separate it. Don't separate religion and politics. And I'm saying even in religion, you're being told that you take from the rich, you help the poor. That's just, it's, it's logic. However, if you want to take from the rich and help the poor, there's a way you have to do it. You have to check and see who really deserves it. We don't give sadaqah or aid to those that don't deserve it. When the UN wants to give you aid and you send a letter to, you send a petition to the UN and you say, I want you to give me money so I can build a hospital in a village somewhere. And then the UN comes and finds out that there are 30 hospitals over there. Certainly, and then the people in the community are doing very well, cars driving everywhere. Certainly they won't mind you. They will be willing to invest in a hospital in Isulenzo, not in Isulenzo. So I'm saying that I there's see. nothing wrong with helping the poor, but we have to do it right. I see. So there's nothing wrong with helping the poor. Let's do it right. That's um, from Adel Umar Ibrahim, is a member of the NDC's National Communications Bureau. Uh, also, I understand vying for the position of Deputy Regional Youth Organizer. Again, I've heard these comments also from uh, Angel Kabonu, uh, the, the head of, or the leader of NAGRAT, who says, look, if there are better opportunities outside the country, freely leave the country uh, and go. Uh, again, there were a lot more uh, reports that came through in terms of teachers wanting to leave opportunities outside. Uh, if you like, the, the, the were, there was a particular country also calling for uh, teachers from Ghana. And that's what he said. I thought that we could be patriotic at that point in time. But hey, uh, nobody wants to stay around here. And the nurses are also... Uh, stating that clearly, that if improved conditions are not uh, brought to uh, the nurses' front, clearly you're going to have a lot more leaving the country, and they are free to do so. 
Uh, that's where we are today, and that's what we're discussing. Karaj Nobi is a member of the new Patriotic Party's National Communications Team. Hi, it's good to see you. Hello. Uh, Hello. Right, so uh, we have two now in the studio. Uh, let me just quickly um, wrap up with Adele, and let me allow Karaj to settle in. And so the, the question I just want to ask is that, uh, just as the new Patriotic Party has done, mm. Uh, by reversing some of the, 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 the ones you had taken off, mm -hmm. especially the teacher trainees. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time I had them in the studio, mm -hmm. uh, he had vowed mm -hmm. that anybody that touched the allowance mm -hmm. would uh, experience the wrath of uh, the teacher trainees. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure you speak for the NDC, the entire NDC, but would you want mm -hmm. them to take off these allowances again? So look, currently as we speak as mm -hmm. a country, mm -hmm. We are at a crossroads. Right. And the NDC has put in place plans, inshallah. Mm. Come 2024, if we do win the elections into mm. 2025, mm. we would be able to actually relook at the entire finance system we mm. have and then put things right. Look, we can maintain them, okay, and still do okay. Why I say this is because the problem we're having today is that there's indiscipline with money. The president is still flying around with, you know, with a private jet. You would have to understand and admit that there's a problem and put a break. Mm. When you put the break and you cut down on expenses, because we agree that the problem is money. So we just have to agree to cut down on expenses. Every family, look, the average family knows how to do that. If you're taking 2,000 Ghana cities a month and you know that you have issues to deal with, your kids are going to school, problems are about coming, cut it down. Why would you go buy kebab every night or go to Morocco when you can actually just go to the farm and buy some tomatoes and come and cook something with you and your wife? So if you decide that you would not put a break, then there's a problem. So what we are saying is that let's put a break first. Let's, 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 let's admit that's a problem. Cut down expenses first. When you do that, you realize you have some funding already. Now that funding that you have, you can now go into how do we get access into that? So my brother, this bottle, excuse me, that bottle here, we have a lot of oil in this here. We want to drain the oil out. What you do is that first, if the oil is here, you don't add more of it. You stop here. Then you can probably take some water and stop dropping inside this bottle. It will flow, 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 flow. The oil will drop, and then you have complete water. This is what we're saying. Stop. Mm. I see. So cut expenditure and all that. Um, it, it's, it's only okay that... Um, Public sector workers ask for improved con conditions. Um, today, um, lots of things are high. 23.6% inflation, high as ever uh, from 2004. Uh, they are struggling to get, um, if you like, access to basic things now. Uh, but yet, their salaries, their allowances have not improved. Where do we go from here? All right. Thank you very much, Koku. And, uh, good to see you again. Mm. It's been quite a while. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, good morning to my friend. Courage. All the nice best in your contest. Yes. I appreciate. Yes. Thank uh, you very much. Let me first apologize to your viewers. Right. Uh, I got stuck quite on the motorway. Right. Uh, quite heavy traffic, mm. and that's why I'm late. My apologies, and it was unintended. I think coming, I was listening to my brother okay. here and the uh, discussion thus far, and I think. It is not out of place that people would want better conditions for their lives. It is not out of place that workers would want improved conditions. In fact, it is for that very reason that we came to power in 2016. It is for that very reason that they rejected the NDC in 2016. And from 2017 onwards, we have delivered just that. We continuously delivered that mm -hmm. up until globally the world was taken down. And so presently where we are is when we are providing leadership to try and take ourselves out of that context. So we cannot have any meaningful conversation and lose sight of the fact of now what others may even call the twin disaster of, 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 of um, COVID. And immediately after when we are now trying to get ourselves up, we are hit with another situation that is happening in Ukraine that has significant consequences, I mean, economically. On, on us and all other spaces. So at this very present time, the question you ask is that, what do we do? Do we 
um, just throw our hands up in despair? No. Certainly, you need to tackle the critical sector of the, of the economy. And at the end of the day, it comes down to one thing, jobs, jobs, and jobs, all right? So you have a government that continues to critically invest in creating job opportunities for the average Ghanaian. And they are saying that, stay with us, stay with us, stay with us. That is all we are doing. If you look at just this uh, from last year coming alone, the number of new factories that have come on stream, hoping to create more jobs for people. At this time, it is a time indeed, as I just said, to cut down. And this government has demonstrated that. We slashed salaries of government appointees. We've cut on, we've, we've, we've uh, what do you call it, taken off certain uh, benefits that government uh, appointees were enjoying. And we continue to hold the economy together. We continue to invest in the critical sectors of the economy where you cannot cut down. Because when you cut down in those critical areas, everything will shut down. All right. So it is easy for the NDC to come promise, promise, <coughs> promise. But the point is that if my brother sits here and says that, oh, they didn't have a certain amount of money, that is why they couldn't do anything, and that if they have the money we have today, they could do it. The point is that money is generated. There's no money lying anywhere that you go and take. They couldn't generate it. That's why they couldn't do the very things that we have generated the money and then we are doing, such as giving allowances to the, the struggling in our society. I mean, making sure that we are supporting the weak in our society so that equity-wise, everybody can stand. That's why we have made access to education free for all. Because see, if you don't build your critical mass, if you don't build your people through education, there's nothing you can do. Even investors will not come into your space. For example, as at 2016, uh, 2018, the net enrollment for tertiary institutions in this country was 18.1%. It means that if you take 100 people who start off school at, let's say, primary school, only 18 out of the 100 end up at the tertiary level. By tertiary, we are talking about universities, polytechnics, teacher trainee, nursing trainees. That is woefully inadequate. What is the right thing? The critical one that you need for even industrialization is about 40%. We are doing less than half of that. So this government says, let us push money into that side to make sure that, one, we are improving outcomes at the basic level so that more people will be able to pass and then access to the tertiary. And for the tertiary, what we are saying is that we are giving access to loans to enter that space. That certainly cannot be said to be frivolous. That is investment into the future of this very country. That is investment so that while government is creating the enabling environment for private sector to build factories, to create more employment, would have the skilled and developed youth to fill those spots. Otherwise, you're going to have a situation where we'll create spaces and we'll now have to import skilled labor because we'll not have them. What have we done in the area of even technical education, which is very key for industrialization? We have moved to, to almost all of them, all the 10 in this country have seen government finances touch them to retool them, building machine factories in these places so that these young people who are in this place can be well equipped, mechanic, mechanical wise, can be well equipped skill wise, to be able to take on the jobs that we need, uh, the, the jobs that we'll be creating for this. So it is that policy coherence and consistency that will develop a nation. Coherence, that, uh, consistency, yes. have a sustainability. Of because course. again, there's, there's been a lot of talk about even free SHS. Um, lately, I've heard, I mean, you heard as well, uh, Santini also speak about that. I, for one, agree clearly that we could have a free senior high school mm -hmm. education, just as stated in the Constitution. It's a provision that from basic, uh, we could start having that and all that. As to whether we are ready to do that was another question. We started off. It's okay, we brought in a lot of numbers, yet we have had even the finance minister, your finance minister, question that. And clearly, according to others, that's what even cost uh, the job of uh, Honorable Hamid for questioning the, the finance minister. All of these has to have to do with sustainability. So we can talk about consistency, coherence, as to whether it's having, uh, if you like, effect on our, the economy is one question we need to answer. You don't think so? Okay, thank you very much. I think when my parents started paying school fees for mm -hmm. me from primary school, mm -hmm. from basic all the way, it didn't have any effect until I completed tertiary and I started working. So you cannot say that those who have, for example, completed a senior high school under this module, mm -hmm. 
we should immediately be seeing certain contribution to the economy. No, I didn't say that. Yes, I'm so, saying the so, effect on our course, expenditure. Yes, what so are, that's, that's exactly the point right. is that, do you agree mm. that it is important? Mm. Do we agree as a people that we need to create access to education? If we do, we must make sacrifices to sustain it. No, I agree that we should have affordable, uh, if you like, it should be made affordable, one. Two, uh, not everyone must, must, must uh, uh, be made to go for free. Why not? I, I agree. Oh, because some people can pay for. And I hear it was done. I was not in the era of Nkrumah, mm -hmm. but I hear it was done that way. So people who could pay, paid. People who could not, of course, had... Of course, farmers, the, the children of mm -hmm. Coco farmers and all that, these other people were made to go for free. So I feel that not everybody has to go for free. Well, even in, in Nkrumah's time, mm -hmm. it was sectorial. The north, the northern part of this country right. was woefully underdeveloped. Right. The southern part had seen some development. Mm. So whereas those in the southern part were paying, those in the north were excluded. Mm -hmm. Today, that makes it different. Mm -hmm. It's a nationwide thing. No, but it's, we still have that, uh, that, that, that yes, in but, the north. I mean, there are people in the north who can pay. Yeah, absolutely. So because of that mix, right. the point is that you're talking about taxing the rich mm -hmm. to support everybody mm -hmm. else. You cannot pass a policy and tell me that those who are working, like yourself, who is working, who is paying okay. direct taxes, right? Your children should not benefit. Now, as to whether what you are even making, again, can sustain your family, per your circumstance, mm -hmm. to be able to even afford 5,000, 7,000 for extra high school again, we cannot tell. The point is that when you're passing a policy like this, it has to be universal. Go to the United States, go to the UK, go to the Scandinavians, it is universal. Those who can pay in this country, I know, their children are in GIS, they are in TIS, they are SOS. They are in Lincoln Community School where they are paying $26,000 and others a year. Now, the government has said that, for example, if I sit in here, I have a ward, and I said I can pay, I can walk to the school, there is provision made for that, and say that, oh, whereas the government has paid, I still want to support the school with this amount of money because I can afford it. We are yet to record one parent who has done that since this policy was implemented. So the mantra that, that those I, I who can pay uh, the, the and last all of one that, was that you are yet to see a, a parent, a parent who, who mm -hmm. has walked to Achimota School, mm -hmm. to Premper College, to Wesley Girls. At least this is the place that we say that the world to do have their kids mm -hmm. in. To say that you know what school fees are supposed to have been five thousand mm -hmm. a term, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, my child has been coming for free. <laughs> I want to donate this 5000 that I would have used to pay the fees so that the school can, can use it. I've heard people talk everybody. about that, that yeah. if there's an opportunity, they could do that. There is. The Minister of Education made this public on air that they, they are free to do that. Nobody has done that. So the, the rhetorics that, oh, there are those who can pay, there are those who can pay. The point is that even to determine that you need a very serious data, but you cannot wait forever. From the early 2000s, education from basic all the way to JHS, mm. public, has been free. Well, after okay, 20 my, my years, difficulty, we cannot say that secondary should not be included. My difficulty, that we are not ready. my difficulty here is not even about the point you're making, beautiful. But whoever made this, this, this comment, it's not me, it's the finance minister, for goodness sake. Of course. It's, it, that's the man who pays for. But the one who runs education has told you that there's an avenue. Who, who, who is the one who runs? The minister so of education. If, the honorable, minister, honorable absolutely. Of course, he was not the one handling this before at the time this was made, though. But my, well, he's my, been handling directly for almost two years now. So he's no, the one. I, I'm that, saying that he was even the deputy time, at the time. Uh, no, yeah, of course, not yes. in charge uh, as, uh, with the minister. My, my point is that the man who was paying says, Charlie, it's, 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 it's causing. Challenges. No, but of course, it's causing <laughs> us. You see, it's Anyways, the, 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 fee, the expenditure on free SHS right. is heavy. I see. But is it necessary? Yes. Okay. Should it be sustained even if it is all that we have? Right. Yes, it should be. We'll, we'll take a break at this point. When we come back, we'll talk about the 150,000 indirect and direct jobs that was created by one year on earth. Again, I was in this studio. Uh, we had a banter. I had a banter with the CEO of uh, the National Youth Authority as to what numbers there are. Today, we have some numbers to deal with. Stay with us. And we're still here um, having a discussion. Adele Umar Ibrahim is a member of the NDC's uh, National Communications Bureau. Uh, and also, Karish Nobi is a member of the New Patriotic Party's Communications Bureau, of course, the national. Uh, do I still start off with you? Uh, the issue of 150,000. Okay, so I'll do that quickly so that I can go to uh, Adele. Um, Look, I have always stated that it's okay to have factories in this country. Absolutely. Uh, it's okay because that's industrialization. A lot of countries are where they are because 
that is that was the drive but where we have multinational companies foreign companies uh, having if you like partnerships with government mm -hmm. and of course they are they are their take is bigger uh, where their top management top workers are not nationals mm -hmm. and and of course after everything because we do not own 100 percent of that a larger chunk of that money in dollars is taken out that is why we could arrive here at the 23.6 percent and of course it was an argument i went in with so it's okay to have factories it's okay to build more it's okay to have partnerships but again the local content that we want if we do not have it we're still going to be planted. So the 150,000 years, I can agree, indirect, direct jobs, how much are they even earning? And it's one of the uh, things I want to do. So let's, let, let me gauge your thoughts on the issues of 1D1F, where a lot more of the factories we're having here are not ours. And largely, because they are big, they take those monies out, in dollars out. By February, March, you have the, the city suffering again. Okay. Uh, Rugu, I understand your conundrum. I, I think it, it's true that when you roll out such a bold policy uh, seeking to create employment, you would want to pay attention to local content. Indeed, this policy appreciates that. So there, there are quite a number of the factories that are operating under this module that are wholly owned Ghanaian institutions. There are also a number How that many are, are there? Do you have the data? I, I don't have the specifics. That would have helped. I don't have the specifics in there. Um, I think my next visit, from here, I will find out so at my next visit, I would bring that. Um, there are some that are also foreign, wholly owned. There are also others that are partnerships between foreign and local uh, participants. Mm. All right, so all these three must have space to thrive. Ultimately, you want to have functioning factories that, are, that have the capacity to employ and have the capacity to produce more so that we can begin to do import substitution. Quite a large chunk of the reason why inflation has gone so high, all right, is because of heavy importation. Heavy, heavy, heavy importation. So if you check, <coughs> sorry, when we started, mm. even with planting for food and jobs, certain staples were targeted to make sure that we boost production in those ones so we can cut down on import. You need all of these to run concurrently for a number of years before you can begin well, to see years? the impact. Seven, seven years. The gestation one... period for a factory average is about 2.5 years. Uh -huh. All right? And so how many now, were... Now uh, how would I, how would I would have wished uh, we could we could. I think we have about down. 107 operational now. No, I, I, in, I would have... In the uh, absolutely. I would have, I would have uh, been excited if we were to break it down. How many are foreign-owned partnerships and all that? How many started mm -hmm. uh, what year and all that? And so that we understand that... I, I, I think, for example, I, I would take the pains to do that, but mm. you could even, sorry, send a reporter to the 1D1F secretariat. I'm not too sure. Every, uh, no, no, you could, and they, <laughs> they have, they'll, get, they'll get access to talk to, engage those directly implementing it, and get answers. But they are, they, the point is that, mm. where we are today, mm. and I'll boldly say that, but for initiatives like planting for food and jobs and 1D1F, but for these two, inflation probably should be looking around 60%. So the point is that when you have a government that has implemented policies that whereas globally everyone, I mean inflation is skyrocketing, you can still have it at a certain level because there's a particular policy in place that is putting limitations on that free fall inflation. You should appreciate it. And the point is that what, that 150,000 employed, imagine if they were not, and these are direct, we've not spoken about indirect, no, direct and indirect. Yes. That, but direct it, and indirect. Okay, is great. The one Imagine if these down. people were not productively engaged. How, however, the question for me and I've asked is whether mm -hmm. they are gainfully employed. Well, gainfully <laughs> means some appreciable to be, to be able to take care of the, the, the goods and services, mm -hmm. the, the prices that are skyrocketing. Yes. So it's one thing being paid $250, <laughs> 500 where you have a lot of things expensive in the no, country, but, but there are some, gainfully employed. But there are, some, there are Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in, among these numbers are directors, uh, managers, uh, 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 of offices, different levels, I different I have strata. I to do this research myself. Yeah, different strata of <laughs> engagement. <laughs> As right? whether they are Ghanaians or not. Oh, no, no, no. There are a number of them that are even Ghanaian owned. How okay. much more they are managed? Oh, absolutely. There are even some foreign ones. That, that's why I want to know how yes, many are Ghanaian. But there are even some foreign owned ones right. whose managers right. are 
have Ghanaians. Okay. And then there is also the other message. But well, it also raises a very important question okay. for the Ministry of Employment and Labor okay. to begin to look into it. Does the law allow, for example, uh, foreigners to engage at a certain level? How about, how about we no. chase the local content bill? Rather, th let's do that. No, but so that is being done. For, for example, Ghana Gas, Ghana Gas Company, uh -huh. right? Almost all its technicians today, uh -huh. in about, I think, the past, uh, for the past two years, okay. our Ghanaians, there's been that exchange mm -hmm. of, of expertise mm -hmm. and then exchange of hands mm -hmm. so that the foreigners are gone. That's I it. know some oil companies that are all doing that. The Petroleum Commission is ensuring that that is being driven mm. strongly. Okay. The local content office at um, Petroleum Commission, headed mm. by uh, Mustafa Hamid, would be able to respond to that. And mm. I know trainings are being done and all that. So all of this has been done, but it will take, for example, I know you're very concerned. Walk to them. Send your reporters to no, them. No, I'm not too sure, please. please. You know, send your reporters. We, we, Why? We have have you gone to any job. public institution and not received the information? Of course. This but no name, name and shame. Oh, no, no. Name and shame. Yes, name well, and shame. So they come after me. No, no. I'm not too sure. Oh, come on. <laughs> Nobody will come, come after, after you. Let no, me go to Adele Nobody Adel will come after you. Adel, I, we've been yeah. talking about a lot. Probably you're writing, so respond to some of these things. Corey, yeah. listen. Um, so I had, um, I had courage mm. mention earlier on <coughs> the issue of COVID and the issue of Ukraine and Ukraine Russia. Ukraine and Russia. Look, COVID did not happen in Ghana. Um, uh, 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 Ukraine war did not happen in Ghana. Likewise, it didn't happen in Togo and in Chad. But we all agree that it has effects. COVID happened all over the world. We all admit. If you check inflation rate 2022, you'll be amazed at what you're looking at. Togo here is doing two point something. Benin is doing two point something. Chad, Nigeria is a bit high, 15. All these countries were affected by COVID. All these countries were affected by the Ukraine war. And you see, the problem is that when we speak, they don't listen. What we're saying is that, yes, COVID affected Ghana. Yes, Ukraine war has affected Ghana. However, we're saying that your mismanagement before COVID is why we are where we are. Your mismanagement. Because look, in 2019, the World Bank stated, in fact, recently, even the World Bank had made mention of that issue again, that Ghana was mismanaged before COVID. Where mismanaged before COVID? I'll look for the story and I'll read it for you. So what we're saying is that, Admit, you see, the reason why it's a problem in the country right now is that you don't want to even admit there's a, pro there's a problem. You don't want to admit there's a problem. How do you solve it? This is common sense. We have an issue. Why is Ghana running at 23? Why? Look at Benin. Look at Togo. Two. You're doing 23. You say we don't have the right to speak. SubhanAllah. Why? I'll bring you to something. He mentions the issue of free SHS. You see, the problem is that the MPP, like I always say, when you have a little bit of pride and arrogance and you always want to put yourself above everybody else, sometimes God will just give it to you and disgrace you. Free SHS. My brother Corey is sitting here. He's married today. He has a child. Before he got married, there are basic things you have to put in place. I want to differentiate it. There are certain basic things you have to put in place. You would have to go see her family. It's mandatory. You would have to probably send in some things, you know, buy some dowry. It's mandatory. Except for when they say, oh, we're forgiving you, we dashed it to you. You would have to look for some space. Even if it's chamber and hall and something, whatever it is, even if it's a single room, it's mandatory. You cannot go and pick her up and go and lodge with her in a friend's apartment, single room. He has a, a wife, and then you also have a wife. And go beg your friend and tell him, give me space so you and I can share in that single room. It's not done. Courage, would you do that? No. When Free SHS came, what we told you is this. We said, yes, it's been 30 years, like you're saying. It's been in the Constitution. We all agree. 30 years, we agree. We agree the time is now. So from the time that we agree the time is now, what do we do? We do preparations. No? <laughs> Over the years, we haven't done much to it. But now we all agree, as a nation, it is time for us to do something about the free SHS. Let's do it. So what do you do? It is time for me to get married. So what do you do? You start putting certain things in place. So we said to you, take your time. 
You've waited for 30 years. However, it would be very, very, very unreasonable to drag all of us into this and then not be able to sustain it and break it down. A typical example is you're running a poultry in this space. You need, you're being told what you need in this space is 40 fowls. You decide to bring 40 fowls. Later, you decide to come and add 50. Then you go to the Poultry Farmers Association and say, I want to add 50. Then they tell you, please expand the room by an extra 20 feet. Then you say no. Then you carry 40, 50 extra. Come and add it to it. What happens? When a disease breaks, everybody dies. We said, expand washrooms. Basic things like washrooms, you will take it for granted. But these are students who will go to school who can catch up diseases and infections. Expand washrooms. Expand dormitories. We saw it when FreeSHS was, was immediately enacted. Students went and they couldn't find space to sleep. Get them extra dormitories. We need extra classrooms. We can at least, so if we know that the population we're expecting is 500, we may not be able to do for all 500. But at least if we're able to do accommodation for even 250 or 300, then we know that we can be able to manage the extra 200. Nothing. Let's go. The fall inside is just 10, 100 Ghana cities. You don't do that. Even with your home, you don't do that. So we keep telling them, they keep refusing to listen. You have a response. There are certain basics that you have to do, whether you like it or not. And we're saying that at our time, those things we were referring to were basics. Let me give you an example. Legon Hospital. We built it. After we did Legon Hospital, it took them a while to open it. Why? Why? They said what? They said, we have to put some infrastructure in place, right? We have to bring some extra machines. Oh, even the, uh, the generator set, the NDC left there, they are not working. Initially, they said there's no generator. Later, they said, oh, there's generator, but it's not working. We have to not configure. Oh, we have to bring a couple of other machines. Why didn't you just open for us to start stage? This is cool. Wherever you enter, if you say this analogy doesn't work, anywhere you enter, it works. So we keep telling them, and we're running a country together, and we're not your enemy. In any case, if you listen and we come together and we find a solution, we help the country better. Courage is better off. I am better off. We have a hospital. I was watching a news um, just recently in one of the villages that we constructed a hospital, and then the people in the, in the neighborhood are saying that that hospital has been there for the past five years. It hasn't been open. What is left is for them to buy a few things in there. Open it and go and do surgery. You can't because the basics must be there. And we said, let the basics come. Then we can all look at it, and then we you, Let's go and start. You want to jump from a story building. We say, hey, my brother, don't jump. Wait, take your time. Because there's only two things that will happen. If you want to call Allah, call Jesus. If you jump, you fall. It's a principle. We say, don't jump. So oh, I'll jump. It's not too far. We say, don't jump. Because two things is likely to happen. You may break your head, or you may break your leg, or you may die. You say, I want to jump. When I jump, and I fall down and have little scratches, then I'll see how I can now put something down before I jump. You go back and jump. So we, we're just telling you, we are brothers, we're siblings, we're a family. Ghana belongs to all of us. Yes, we will do our politics, but when it comes to sensitive areas of the country, like education, you don't play with it. You don't, you don't do that. You don't cook figures. You don't sit down and play with it because it comes back to hunt us. Look, if you feel you're living in East Ligon or you feel like you're living in Tazaku, and for that matter, you're safe and you don't have a problem, when things go south, there's going to be a major problem because the major problem you're going to have is when you have educated people, let me give you a typical example. Someone who has a little bit of education doesn't have a full grasp of education. When that person decides to do something evil, it would amaze you what they can do. I've seen young people, our brothers and siblings, who, because of whatever reasons they have, have decided to do Sakawa. Myself and my cousin wrote a book in 2009 calling the government then that look, if we don't do things, something about this internet fraud thing, it will be a problem. I remember we went to Accra Academy and we spoke about it. Because these are young people who are doing it and they are making other people see it and they feel that is the way to go. So other kids are thinking, hey, you know, Sister, uh, uh, sister Jamila or Sister uh, Abdullah's son has gotten a car. So the other kids are not interested. Oh, let's all go to the cafe. Let's see what we can do. I know people, even within my family, who have not gotten any education, but I've learned and they can sit on, on the internet. Talk to people to release them 
hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, and then they're spending. And we're telling you that these are people that you can harness. Imagine somebody without a psychology, you know, no psychology, no, no any serious education. Ghanaians are intelligent. Harness these energies. But you can only do it when you have a proper system. I see. We have two let minutes. Me, uh, great. Let me. No, uh, 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 thank you. Let me. Let me because I'm just giving. Yeah, because no, I had you came in, we went, me. came back from break and all that. Unemployment, I'm coming. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, my, you, 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 my brother, you came late. Next time, come back. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me. Let me two just, minutes. No, what no, do I do? One minute, one minute. I beg you. Let me just say something about the factories. Okay, quick. Look. So I'm timing you. Time me, please. When the NDC, no, you, this timing is wrong because we don't know how many seconds has already. Oh, yeah, but I'm, no you forgot. <laughs> you are taking the time. Okay, so, <laughs> so let me tell you something. <laughs> let, let me share something with you. Right, please do. Look. What did the NDC do? I want to give him an alternative. Right. He mentioned Ghana Gas at Wabo. We mm -hmm. built it. Mm -hmm. You've seen the parliament there. What NDC keeps telling them is that you can do capital expenditure. TV Africa, take TV Africa. From the time you start building TV Africa to the time you finish completing it, you already give them power jobs. Mason, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, plumber, electrician. People are coming, they're working. There are jobs constantly. Aside that, when you finish, and it's not just the people that are working. You're buying cement. You're buying blocks. You're buying so the block factory man is, is, is benefiting. The iron rust man is benefiting. The economy is boosting. Everybody has some money in their pocket. So if you have 10, 15, 20, 100 projects going on, everybody is fit in in any part of the country, and people are what are involved. When TV Africa is over, like Atuabo, like Ghana Gas, like KIA, like uh, Terminal 3, like Legon Hospital, when it is done, then now you employ. You don't put sheep in the hospitals. You put human beings. You put nurses. Then you come and now give permanent employment. This was our strategy. You come, you put capital expenditure aside, you take monies, you go and drop to a few people. I that see. thing you have done, we did with the pharmaceuticals. We gave the pharmaceuticals money, including Tobinko, they benefit from it. You don't go and pick up, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, someone's okay. factory, and then you, you put a little bit of it, and then expect that to change the country. No. Right, right. So, um, courage, quickly. Th thank so you very few, much. I think my seconds. brother made a statement that this economy had been mismanaged before COVID. No, I think and, what he said and, was and, that uh, uh, World Bank. World Bank yes, yes and, that, and that the inflation yeah. that we have today is as a result of that. I want to just stick to the fact, all right? So I'm going to run through inf inflation figures from 2012. 2012 inflation was 7.3, 2013 was 11.6, 2014 was 15.4, 2015 was 17.1, 2016 was 17.4. So we're on a progressive, uh, I mean, upward, uh, how do you call it, rise in inflation. 2017, 12.3, 2018, 9.8, 2019, 7.1. 2020, because of COVID, things then started going south. So when we are telling you that this is the result of that, backed by data and information. You tell us that, no, it's not true. And that because you think, you think, from 2012, consistent inflation was rising okay. until we put a break on it in 2017. And we brought it down all the way to 7.1. I mean, single digit. Can it get any better? Now, on the issue of capacity in secondary schools, it's just simple. As of 2017, nobody in this country, not the GES or any institution, knew the actual deficit of young people who have not been able to progress to secondary school. So you didn't even have any data to make the inform information. Okay. As we speak today, by the promise of this government, not a single person who entered secondary school this year is on double track. All right. This is how you skillfully manage the sectors, and that's right. what we are doing. Okay. You cannot trust the NDC to do so. Karen you know, please, with the uh, uh, MPP National Communications team, and uh, Adel Omar Ibrahim is vying for Deputy Regional Youth Organizer. We wish you all the best. When is the elections? October. We don't know about that, October, do we? October, my brother. Oh, October. October. I see. We wish you all the all best. The best we'll monitor as well. Yeah. Member of the NDC's National yeah. Communications yeah. Bureau. Now, let's yeah. talk about the violent yeah. extremism, all right? Yeah. Student in Nigeria was murdered, was stoned to death, was burnt, yeah. and all that. Yeah. Uh, clearly, clearly, there are issues of inter- or intra-religious uh, Right, so Ado, you wanted to... to I, I really want to right. say something about this. Initially, I thought you would actually raise this issue. Look, this, well, this, this was in this, another Yeah, segment. this is an Islamic. Okay. And we have to put it right. right. Let me tell you something. During the time of Prophet Muhammad, something happened. Hmm. Two of his uh, disciples, they were called disciples or followers, were actually traveling on the desert coming to Saudi Arabia. <coughs> and then they were met by unbelievers mm -hmm. who wanted to murder them. So they said, you, say God doesn't exist and Muhammad is a liar and then we'll let you live. So the other one said no and then they killed him. And then the other one said, yes, Muhammad is not, he's not, he's not a prophet and God. Then they spared him. He went to the prophet and he was crying. 
that you know I, I, I have I have you know betrayed you. I should have said you are. He said, No, you're facing death. God listens to the heart. Mm. It doesn't matter. We do not know when somebody speaks to religion, you don't punish them. Mm. Because look, Lati Lesfidin, there's no compulsion in religion. Why do you force anybody to enter? La the Quran tells you, Lati Lesfidin, there's no compulsion in religion. Let everybody do what they want to do. When we get there, we'll go and decide. Mm. And for here, let's all struggle, find our food and eat. But That's you cannot, I mean, and my it's, comment honest, is it's mm. unacceptable. I think Adol says it's un-Islamic. Mm. I have seen, and since this thing happened, there have been tons of videos of mm. Islamic clerics mm. 